Today is going to be 2-2 graphs of the equations. So we're going to continue into our idea of relations and what this is going to look like. So today we're going to determine if a point lies in the equation of a graph. We're going to graph an equation by using t-charts and help to help and assist us. Uh, it's always a way to fall back to see how do we graph points. We're going to find the x and y intercepts and then we're going to test the graph for symmetry. So one of the fundamental graphing principles says that the graph an equation is the set of points which satisfy the equation. That is, a point x, y is going to be on the graph of an equation if and only if the graph x and y satisfies the equation. Now when I use this phrase, x and y satisfy the equation, it means that x and y make the equation true. So when you plug them in, the statement has to be end up true when you simplify. So let's take a look at an example of that. Let's determine whether or not 2, negative 1 is on the graph of x squared plus y to the third equals 1. We got to see, does that satisfy the equation? So to determine that, I'm going to plug the point and see if it's true. So does 2 squared plus negative 1 to the third power equal 1? That is 4. That's negative 1. Does that equal 1? Well, on this side, I get 3. 3 does not equal negative 1, so therefore it's false. So I can make the statement that the point 2, negative 1 is not on the graph of x squared plus y to the third power equals 1. doesn't satisfy the equation. Now we can spend less time guessing to see if points work by formatting the equation just a little bit. Now when we format the equation uh, to make it look correct, what we're basically doing is we're trying to solve for y. So we want to get y by itself. So if I take that x squared plus y to the third power equals 1, I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides, and so I'm going to get y to the third power equals 1 minus x squared. y is still not by itself, so I want to take the cube root to both sides, and so the cube root and the cube cancel out, and so I'm going to get y equals the cube root of 1 minus x squared. Now this right here, that's going to be my equation uh, that I'm going to use when I'm trying to see how uh, points are going to work. So now what I want to do is to find these points, I can now plug in values for x. x, well at least the way that I formatted my equation, I've created this input-output process. I can input values for x, simplify it, and it's going to give me then a value for y. So in this example here, if I plug in negative 3 for x, I'm going to get this statement here. Now if I simplify that, I'm going to get 1 minus 9, which is the cube root of negative 8. And so the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is going to give me that negative 8. So I can say that the point negative 3, negative 2 is on the graph. So instead of, in this previous example, where I was just plugging in things and saying, oh, does this work, does this not work? Instead of doing that, now I can determine every single point by now, because I got y by itself, I can just start plugging in values for x to get my y. Now if I continued in that process, if I just kept picking points, we can eventually create a table which represent every single point that's on the graph. So as you can see, if I plug in 3, or negative 3, it's going to give me negative 2, and I can write it as a point, negative 3, negative 2. If I plug in negative 2, it's going to give me this value, negative cube root of 3. If I plug in negative 1, it's going to give me 0. If I plug in 0, it's going to give me 1. And don't necessarily worry about these values, because we can always enter them in a calculator to get that a decimal approximation. But now if I take all these values and I plot them on the graph, this is what it's going to give me. As you can see, there's negative 3, negative 2. There's the negative 2 and then the negative cube root of uh, radical 3. Negative 1, 0. There's 0, 1. There's 1, 0. Once again, 2 and negative cube root of 3 and then positive 3, negative 2. And so I get the model of this graph right here. And then after you have that graph, what you can do is you can kind of connect them, right? And so this is kind of like the process of how the graph would look if I were to connect the dots. So just kind of remember that when we plot in these points, 
it only gives us a small sample of what the graph is actually going to look like. If we do want that bigger picture, we can always use a graphing utility to kind of help us with that. And so if we entered this equation into our graphing calculator, we would have been able to see exactly how this curves. And because some of us might just think, oh, it goes to here. Well, why didn't it, why isn't that a sharp turn? You know, and if we enter that in our calculator, you know, it gives us a better idea. So now we're going to talk about x and y intercepts. Now I talked about this in a previous session. And we said that a point on a graph, which is also on the x-axis, is called the x-intercept of that graph. And then a point on a graph, which is also on the y-axis, is going to be called the y-intercept of the graph. So kind of to visually take a look at that, if I had this graph here, this right here is my x-intercept. This right here is my y-intercept. Now just a couple of things that I just want to qualify real quick because we kind of get carried away with our notation. X-intercept represents a point. So if I'm going to say what is my x-intercept, I'm going to say that my x-intercept is the point 2, 0. If I'm going to say what is my y-intercept, I'm going to say it's the point 0, 3 in this case. So just make sure that when we go through this, you're writing your x and y-intercepts as points and not just, well, y equals this. Is that an equation? What, what is that exactly? I don't know what you're asking here. What is it? So your x and y-intercepts represent points. Now, when we find the x and y intercepts, whenever we're given an equation, okay, the way that we do it is the x intercept's gonna be in this form, right? I said they have to be as points, but to find the x intercept, you're gonna set y equal to zero in the equation and solve for x. To get the y intercept, you're gonna set x equal to zero in the equation and you're gonna solve for y. Okay, so just kind of make sure. So if we're looking at this graph here, my x-intercepts from this graph okay, are going to be negative 1, 0, and positive 1, 0. My y-intercepts in this graph is going to be 0, negative 1, or 0, positive 1. Okay. Now we're going to talk about symmetry. Just like what we were talking about symmetry before, we were just talking about individual points. Now we're going to refer it to a relation, which is a set of points. And so if that set of points represent a graph, how do we find to see, is this graph symmetric? So to see if a graph is symmetric about the y-axis, we're going to substitute a negative x into our, our n for x, and then simplify. If we're going to see that it's symmetric about the x-axis, you're going to substitute this point into the equation and simplify. And then when we're going to uh, see if it's symmetric about the origin, you're going to plug this value into the equation and simplify. And so remember, we're seeing how it reflects. If it reflects over the y-axis, my x's are going from positive to negative. If it's about the x-axis, it's going. my y's are now going from positive to negative, negative to positive. And then about the origin, they're both switching. So in this case here, from that graph, to test to see is it symmetric we're not trying to find what the symmetry is we're just saying is it symmetric we could even notice here uh, that this graph is symmetric over the y-axis y because this side if I were to fold it for this side they're going to be the same thing and so I could make the statement that this is going to be symmetric over that y-axis third example it says find the x and y intercepts of the graph and then test for symmetry. So I need to do both. So to find the x and y intercepts of the graph, we said that to find the x intercept, we have to set y equal to zero and solve for x. So let's do that. To find the x intercept, we're gonna set y equal to zero. And so everything else stayed the same. The only difference is I plugged in zero for y. Now I need to simplify that. So that's just zero. Now getting x by itself, I can take the square root to both sides. And so I get x minus 2 equals plus or minus 1. Then I can add 2 to both sides. And so I'm going to get x, x equals 2 plus 1. And then I get x equals 2 minus 1. And so I'm going to get x equals 3 and 1 when y equals 0. So therefore, I can make the statement that my x-intercepts is going to be 3, 0, and 1, 0. Remember, we have to write these as points.
Now to find the y-intercept, we want to set x equal to zero. So in that equation, I'm gonna substitute a zero in for x. Then from there, you're going to simplify. And so zero minus two squared, I get this negative two squared, that's still my y squared and that's one. Negative two squared, that's four, and that's still y squared and that's one. Then for here, if I subtract four on both sides, I get y squared equals negative three, square root both sides, I get an imaginary number. Because I got an imaginary number, there's no y-intercept, and that's okay. Sometimes that's gonna happen, but just know that whenever we get an imaginary number, it represents that there's no real value that represents it. So there's no real value that represents the x crossing the uh, y-axis and so or the sorry the graph crossing the y-axis and so therefore we can't say that there is a y-intercept so now let's test for symmetry now when we look at symmetry we want to see is it symmetric about the y-axis yes or no is it symmetric about the x-axis and is it symmetric about the origin we're not trying to see what is the symmetric version we're just trying to see is it symmetric so to see if it's symmetric about the y-axis, right, the x's are changing, right, they're flipping, and so that's why I need to plug in a negative in for the x. So let's see, is this symmetric about the y-axis? So all I did is replace my x with negative x. Now I want to see, is it going to give me the same thing? And so just by looking at it, there's no possible way for me to manipulate this this is an x, this is a negative x, there's no way that these are gonna be the same thing. And so I can make the conclusion that it's not symmetric about the y-axis. Now let's see if this graph is symmetric about the x-axis. And so now I need to replace my y with negative y. Now if I do that, notice this is negative y squared. Well, that's gonna become just a positive y squared because a negative and negative, right? There's two of them, it's gonna be a positive. Now if you notice, those are the exact same thing. So because those are the exact same thing, I can make the conclusion that yes, it is symmetric about the x-axis. And then is it symmetric about the origin? Well, if I plug that in, we hit that same issue here um, when it came to being symmetric about the y-axis. And so because that's not the same there, I can't say it's gonna be symmetric about the origin. Let's look at another one. It says find the x and y intercepts of the graph and then test for symmetry. So to find the x and y intercepts for the x one, set y equal to zero. So if I set y equal to zero, I plugged in a zero for y and I get x squared minus one. Add one to both sides and I get one equals x squared, square root both sides and I get x equals plus or minus one. So then my x intercepts are going to be negative one zero and positive one zero. Now to find the y-intercept, set x equal to zero in the equation and solve for y. So if I set x equal to zero, I get y equals negative one, and so my point is gonna be zero, negative one. Now testing the graph for symmetry. So let's look at that. Symmetric about the y-axis, I need to substitute a negative x in for x. So if I simplify that, right, I just replaced x with negative x, Negative, negative is a positive, so I get the same thing. So yep, it is gonna be symmetric about the y-axis. Now let's see if it's symmetric about the x-axis. So if I plug in uh, a negative in for y, these are clearly not the same thing and there's no way that I can simplify it to where it's gonna be the same thing. So then it's not symmetric about the x-axis. Now let's see, is it symmetric about the origin? If I plug both of them in, I get the same situation where I have this negative in front of the y that's not the same as it is here, and so it's not gonna be symmetric about the origin. In closing of today's lesson, what did we learn today? Well, we talked about if an equation is symmetrical or not, and how do we find that? And we also talked about how to find the x and y intercepts of an equation, and this is any equation. And so I wanna know what you guys learned today, and go ahead and comment and tell us how do you find the x-intercept? And then how do I test if the equation is symmetric over the x-axis? Like what should I do to my equation? And then after I've done that to the equation, what should I do afterwards to be able to test if the equation is symmetric or not?
So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.